Hello everybody, welcome to the studio. I'm Andy. Today on the program, we're gonna talk about how you can get a MIDI device like one of these to play something uh, at the other end of a network line. Um, so in my case, in my studio, I run a Dante network and my main computer is here in the control room with all of my great VST instruments. And I often am in the other room or have someone in the other room who would like to take advantage of these great instruments. But how do you connect one of these to this through a wall? You can wire in, of course, hard lines. Um, I'm more flexible and, and desire more flexible solutions than that, of course. So I wanted to get these MIDI signals onto the network uh, and transport it into this control room where they can then control these instruments. So what I discovered when I was learning how this can happen is that Mac has a thing built in. The Mac OS has this capability built in. So if I were to put another computer out there, I could connect MIDI controllers to that computer and then connect the two computers in a very similar fashion to what you're about to see and control either way, whatever I want. And that'd be easy. I don't want to have to have a computer in that room. I'd rather just have everything connected and maybe if there's a little box or something that needs to sit there, That'd be fine, and that's what we ended up with. So I remember it was about a year ago. I did a quick search this morning and found maybe one other device that was similar. And so you have to have a device that can convert, I guess, your MIDI signal to a network. Get it on the network, you know, get it as a network signal. So I chose to have use the iConnect MIDI 4 Plus from iConnectivity. It looks about like this. And so what this thing has is four ports, I guess, and uh, four MIDI ports, and then it has four network ports, uh, which happen through one network line. So on the back here, we've got our, uh, this is for a hub, a USB hub. So you can connect like a USB hub with some, a bunch of controllers to it. Then that next one is the host port which goes to the computer for the app where things are set up. But this thing remembers all of its settings, so that's really nice. Then there's our network line, and then if you want uh, to hook your MIDI devices with DIN, con DIN, DIN controls or DIN ports, DIN lines, regular old school MIDI lines, you can do that there. And that's this device. We're just sitting it on the floor uh, because usually it's in the other room. Next to that is the little hub, so you can have a USB hub and hook up your stuff to it and it can be powered. Uh, also, we have then here an iPhone. Uh, this is, happens to be an iPhone 11. It can be any iPhone. Running uh, some sort of little MIDI program thing. It's called, uh, if this will let us, MIDI Studio. And then this is a Novation launch key and this is an old, old M Audio Pro Keys 88 or something like that. And this is Boomer, hi Boomer. Um, so, let's see what happens. Uh, as we get into our computer, turn this little camera off since we don't need that anymore. What we have happening in the computer, we want to open up the audio MIDI setup. So I have a shortcut on my bar there, shortcut bar you can see. So there's our audio MIDI. We don't see the MIDI stuff by default, so we want to go Window, Show the MIDI Studio, and there it is. So from here, we still don't see exactly what we're looking for. What we want to do is the other stuff you can ignore, but Network, that's the one. Open that up. It's telling us we've got a bunch of connect or a connection was lost because uh, we've disconnected everything for the point of this little demo. So what you're seeing here, of course, is nothingness. We have just our uh, basic, this is what you'll see. Now, normally, if you didn't have something like this eye connectivity device that I have hooked up, you would see nothing up in here. Um, if you had another computer connect connected and you started to get that scenario going, then you would see those things appear in that area right there. But we, that's not what we're doing. We're doing the network thing. And so we have our four network ports and we also have an iPhone port. And I don't know if that's new, something that's like in the newer software updates from them or something that I did 
inadvertently or advertently back in when I was initially setting this stuff up. But when I just went back through it today and went through it to, to set it up for this stuff, what I learned was that ports one, three, and four are definitely happening and the and the or, or or and one three and the iPhone for these devices that I have going two and four are, don't seem to be connected to anything, um, so I'll say this is all very confusing and I'm not uh, I'm not the worst person at a lot of this technical stuff. I set up a lot of this stuff for a long time. This is one of the most complicated things. Maybe it's just me and I can't wrap my head around what it's doing. But, and it may also be the app that comes um, that they use for the eye connectivity thing. It's also a bit confusing. Um, and when I set up mine initially, there were problems with crosstalk between devices that seem to have been worked out in, a, in an updated version of the software. So what I discovered today after, you know, not really messing with it much other than things being plugged in and working, uh, this morning, I, or right before this, I disconnected and, and you know just removed every, rolled back all my work. I took, we took, redid, undid everything. I undid uh, all the connections and all that stuff. I brought the gear in here. It's okay. Let's set this up again and see how hard or easy it is. So, um, let me hook up or plug back in the host connection so you can see on screen what the software that comes to manage this device looks like. It's called iConfig or something, iConnectivity iConfig. And so here we have this. I'm going to tell it to refresh itself. So reread settings. And that way we know we're looking at fresh stuff. And usually that happens without us even seeing a blink of a refresh. Uh, but MIDI Info tab is where you can see uh, a lot of what's happening on this device. You scroll down through here, it tells you every jack. And so, and whether it's enabled for input and output and that kind of stuff. Um, so if you have problems with crosstalk, I would say check there first. That's how I initially solved mine. Like I said today, I don't have any problems with crosstalk. So it has on my USB host jack, you can see both of my controllers are connected there. And <clears throat> excuse me, the iPhone seems to be connected on device jack one, which it is. That's where it's plugged into and it knows it's iOS device host. And we can see this stuff is apparently set up OK. Uh, we wouldn't naturally maybe go into that anyways, but I can unconnect, disconnect that thing right there just to prove the point that the device will remember its settings and we can take that elsewhere and do whatever we like with it now. It's good to go. We can close this software. We don't need that anymore. And so now what we need to do is set up network sessions, one for each device. And those sessions are what will, will appear in our DAW program. And so to add a new session, what we want to do is add it with the plus thing and then connect it to uh, one of these network sessions that we have, which, like I said, we have four out of these guys that have come from the iConnectivity uh, device. So let's go ahead and add a new session, check it, make sure it's enabled. This one, I know I'm going to connect to this first available network connection. So I select it, I hit connect, and boom, look, here it is over here. I'm going to give this a name, and I'm going to name it uh, ProKeys88. Because like I said, I know from doing this a little while ago that that's what number one is connected to is the pro keys. So I'm going to continue and do the rest of these while we're on this thing. Check that and make it live. We can also change the name like this. Number two is not in use. We don't have to worry about that one. Um, and we can actually, oh, that's right. It's the connection number two. See, I'm already getting myself confused. This one's the Novation. And the Novation is connected to port three. If you call it port, I don't know what you call them. Session three, we'll let that be the iPhone. And the iPhone can be connected to iPhone. So look here, this new thing, Mac, iMac Studio 2 and 3 have also popped up. Isn't that fun? So we'll see what I mean like about the confusing nature of this stuff. What I do know, and it'll be awesome Lonnie, if I get over to Digital Performer and it totally is not there, but I'm going to say what I do know is those things, Pro Keys, Innovation, and iPhone will be here in Digital Performer when I get there, and they will trigger 
the different instruments that I want them to. So let's find out. Over to Digital Performer, and let's go to a MIDI track. Let's go to Anna 2. Uh, Anna 2, and we look at, so, ooh, looky here. Uh, I gotta use my mouse. Uh, these are our three connections, and I can verify that those names will update live. If I flip over to these and change the name and flip back, it's going to be reflected in what I see. I don't know if your DAW is like that, but Digital Performer is. So Pro Keys 88 is the one we want. Let's see if it... It does play in a two. Nice. And on to the next one. I have uh, apparently, oh yeah, I'm doing screen recording. I have a lot of stuff going on. That's why it's crackling. A little CPU crackle. It's on kind of semi low latency, 256 for the buffer. Anyways, back to the show. So that's that. Does any of this other stuff work? Oh yeah, we got drums. Drums are hooked up. So it, it remembered my settings from the last session. If I go to the Easy Drummer tra channel, or track, uh, yeah, it's on network iPhone. And you can, of course, select your channel and get really specific with this stuff, but I just put it to any. And we need one, one more instrument, don't we, to test the innovation. So let's, let's add a lethal. If you don't know what lethal is, I highly suggest you run right out to the internet and get yourself a copy of Lethal Audio's plugin. It's so awesome. It's a, a rompler, I think is what they call it. It's like, a, you know, ROM samplers that you can play with and manipulate and have fun with. But uh, anyways, it's fun. Let's, I just hit the demo thing. We'll see what's in the demo library. Uh, big Room Synth. Uh, let's, Novation. So we got a lethal channel here. Let's hook up the Novation, any channel. And rip, it is rip. Oh! It's that easy. So we got. And all three of those devices are now running through nothing but that network line that's coming out of the back of that thing, going into my network and coming here to this. So, how cool is that? Um, super, super easy to set up. Like I said, I'm, I'm relatively sure, I'm like 99% sure because I went through all the settings on the, this device earlier. And I'm relatively positive that that's all default settings. I didn't see anything that reflected what I remember doing last year when I was having problems um, with the iPhone stuff and, and crosstalk. Um, so that's that real quick. And the only other thing I can say kind of about this device that's cool that I haven't really used yet is that if you have a device like like this iPhone connected, say I want there's audio on this iPhone and I want to share this audio and get that into that DAW, into my digital performer app there. Um, well, normally, I guess, what would you do? You'd, you'd find some sort of lightning jack adapter. Ooh, that was, sounds like a fart. <sighs> find like a lightning jack adapter to turn that into regular audio and then you'd have inputs through your sound card and get that to the DAW and you know, how about if we instead have it connected to this device here and it brings its audio right th over the lightning, uh, right out the lightning port through this cable that comes with it and into a USB host right into the front of that into the host jack. So you got a nice, a nice USB connection for your audio to come through, then it hits the network. And from there, it can come into your DAW and you pick it up as an input there. Um, I would demonstrate that. I do not have, I, like I said, I think before, I run a Dante network audio system. And I haven't gotten around to, uh, there's a little, I guess you could call it kind of a plugin, but it's an app you can get from Audinate, the, Audinate, the company that runs, doesn't run, they make the software that runs everything for me. So. Dante Virtual Sound Card is from Audinate, and this right here is my s s virtual sound card, which is configured right now to run 32 ins and outs, and the latency is kind of not accurate at all right there. That's just a, an over-the-top setting. Um, and then you have your Dante controller, which maps all of your connections in your Dante system, which might look a little kind of crazy and it's all your ends. You got uh, transmitters across the top, receivers down the side, and you just hook one to one, blah, 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 blah. And so it's super uh, handy and convenient for uh, like me. I use 
this Personas RML, start with like, where's my mouse? I don't know, I don't care. This Personas stage box out here, I use for microphones out in that room and, and the Dante, just one network line, getting them back in here is super nice, but then I'm really flexible about what I can send back to that thing for monitoring and such like that. It's multiple inputs and outputs. That I just check, check, check on the grid box and off we go. I look cool and everybody goes, whoa. And I'm like, I don't even know what I did. I just I just connected what looked like the right dots and they all worked. So um, that's a cool thing. I uh, will probably, you know, one of these days I'll get that little app from Audinate. What it does, I never even got around to saying what it does is that it allows you to grab the audio from anything on the computer's system, any audio thing, any program, any anything. It's super cool. And pull that into your Dante system. And so, bam, I'd have it. There we go. Uh, so that said, that kind of wraps it up, I guess, uh, for like a general overview. It seems like that was way too fast for such like a complicated thing that I don't understand entirely. But I guess I understand it enough to make it work, which it does. So. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.